Chuck E. Cheese was the worst. Uh -huh. Chuck, because they would post it conspicuously inside their foyer. So you'd already Gosh. crossed onto their property and you were already breaking the law by the time they you saw the sign. <laughs> they had to go back out to the car and lock up the gun and come back in and blow all your money and watching them play skee-ball. <laughs> <laughs> and eating garbage pizza to boot. <laughs> Pistols, prayer, and potluck. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Hi, folks. Welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio, a show about guns, hunting, competitive shooting, the natural right of self-defense, and what God's Word says about the issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, and this is episode number 183. Thank you so much for making Armed Lutheran Radio a part of your week. I'm glad you could spend a little bit of time with us this week and, and make Armed Lutheran Radio a part of your life. We really do appreciate you continuing to listen and support the show. This week is our variety show. We've got tips from the cast. Sergeant Bill is prepping for the IDPA World Championship coming up in October. And Mia's motivation is a report back from her trip to Washington, D.C. as part of the 50 States Project. Pastor Bennett could not be with us this week. It's um, the school starting back up, and it's been kind of crazy and hectic. So um, we will, Lord willing, we'll have him back on the show next week uh, with another Clinging to God and Guns show. Before we get started, let me remind you that none of this would be possible without you, our listeners. Sure, this podcasting thing is fun, but it's also a lot of work, and there are expenses involved for equipment and hosting and software and so forth. Armed Lutheran Radio is listener-funded. We don't have any sponsors, so we rely on your support to do what we do every week. I want to give a special thank you to those of you who support the show by making purchases at um, the Armed Lutheran Shop. Those of you who have bought the new Armed Lutheran books, by the way, you can check those out at armedlutheran.us slash books. The, those of you who have purchased Armed Lutheran swag, at, like t-shirts and patches and can coolers, thank you so much. And a special thanks to all the members of the Reformation Gun Club. The Reformation Gun Club is our membership site, and thanks to their monthly support, we can keep doing what we're doing, and they get some cool benefits in return. Free ebooks, discounts from our partners like Gunbox Gun Safes, um, some cool swag, and hundreds of hours, literally hundreds of hours of exclusive content. And uh, you get invites to monthly hangouts. We had our first third Thursday online hangout last week. It was a lot of fun. The next one is coming up on September 19th. I hope you'll consider joining us at the Reformation Gun Club and joining us for that hangout. And supporting the show, if you are, would like to find out more, check it out at armedlutheran.us slash gun club. All right, real quick, uh, something that I wanted to discuss really quickly um, before we get to our, our cast. On um, the fans of the Armed Lutheran Radio uh, Facebook group, uh, we had a thread going recently after the, the recent shootings in, in El Paso and Dayton. Um, Talking about, you know, I wanted people to talk about, well, what can we do? Is there something that we can do that um, would help us prevent future mass shootings? Every single one of America's mass shooters had warning signs or red flags, if you will, signs that something was wrong. And those signs were either ignored or they were rationalized or excused. We don't need new gun control laws even though some on our side seem to think that, that red flag laws or background checks are the answer, they're not. Background checks and red flag laws and various product bans would not have stopped either one of the most recent killers or any of the previous mass killers. And I've talked about many times um, on the show about how technology connects us like never before. Like, when I was growing up, we couldn't even imagine, you know, cell phones and personal computers and, you know, 24 hour news and all this stuff, Facebook and Twitter and all of the different uh, social media platforms, not even conceivable back then. Today, we are more connected thanks to technology than ever before. 
And yet we are disconnected from our neighbors more than ever before. What we need is not new laws. We don't need new gun laws. We need an engaged society. One that gets their noses out of their cell phones and pays attention. And more importantly, speaks up when they see something that isn't right. To stop these killers, we need people to say something. And then we need the authorities who are ordained by God for our good to actually do something. Too often, one or the other of those things doesn't happen, or both don't happen. And here's some proof. Interestingly enough, as we're embroiled in all these debates about background checks and gun bans and red flag laws, here's proof from CNN, no less, that we don't need anything new. We just need engaged citizens. This is a story from CNN that details how, since the El Paso and Dayton shootings, 27 people have been arrested for making similar violent threats all across the the nation, from New York to Florida, from Washington to California, all the way across the uh, Pacific to Hawaii. In Long Beach, California, police arrested a hotel worker whose fellow employee tipped off police that the guy was planning a shooting spree at the hotel. In Florida, a 15-year-old was detained after he made threats to bring a gun to school. In nine of those 27 cases, the targets were schools. In at least five of them, the target was a Walmart, just like the attack in El Paso. And in another story, again at CNN, this is kind of a shocker, two in a row, Madeline Holcomb writes uh, an article entitled, If You See a Red Flag for a Mass Shooting, This is What You Should Do. And I want to applaud Ms. Holcomb. I don't know anything about her. I just want to applaud her for this effort because this is CNN. And not once in this article does she advocate or quote somebody who advocates for gun control or red flag laws. She, she and I are using the term red flags and you, in sort of the, the way that I meant it in the Facebook post. The red flag is a warning sign, an indicator of a problem. My wife, as a school counselor, talked about red flags all the time, long before any idea of red flag gun violence prevention orders ever existed. All right, reading from the story from Ms. Holcomb, the mother who was concerned about her son's weapons, the woman whose boyfriend told her he had an urge to hurt others. Sometimes the people involved report these concerns to authorities, but more often, according to FBI Executive Catherine, or former FBI Executive Catherine Schweit, they do not. Schweit says that when it comes to preventing incidents of mass violence, community involvement is the key. People talk themselves out of reporting or even believing such red flags exist for various reasons. They they include fear of being wrong, a reluctance to involve police, or just not knowing whether anything can be done, according to law enforcement experts. To report suspicious behavior, one has to know what to look for observable, unusual behaviors. Those closest to people who may commit violence know what behaviors are unexpected for that individual. So, and they point out that mass shootings are planned attacks, right? These people don't get up in the morning. They don't, they don't roll out of bed, eat their Wheaties and say, you know, I think I'm going to go down and shoot some people at Walmart. They plan these things out. They think about it. They may talk about it to others. Maybe your coworker is like that guy in Las Vegas who never really cared about guns and one day he's got two dozen. Hey, look, buying, <laughs> going on a buying spree at a gun shop or a gun show is not a crime. But combined with other factors, other indicators that people close to him might have seen and, and known about, that could form a warning sign. Without a single new law here, almost 30 potential killers were thwarted. We didn't need to change laws and add red flag laws or background checks or whatever. All we needed was for people to speak up. Now, were all these things serious threats? We don't know. Probably not. But I have no doubt that many of those 27 people would have attempted something like El Paso. 
or Parkland. In the wake of a high-profile mass shooting, of course, copycats abound, and we see this every single time. And I'd rather inconvenience some stupid kid in Florida who jokes about mass shootings than to lose my rights because an Americans can't be bothered to get involved. Speaking up when you suspect something, that's not being, it's not being nosy. It's part of being a good Christian, if you think about it. The Christian life is not to live and let live to seal yourself in your own cocoon and and not interact with the world. It's not navel-gazing or contemplating your relationship with Jesus. It's bigger than just you. It's about your neighbor. It's about loving your neighbor. And your warning may help God's ordained authorities protect your neighbors from harm. As Luther wrote in his explanation of the fifth commandment, to do nothing when you could defend or help your neighbor is the same as killing them yourself. Think about that. Everyone who has ever said, you know, I knew one day that guy was going to snap. You know, everybody who said something like that after one of these terrible incidents or after some violent uh, murder, if they said it afterwards, but they didn't bother to say anything before, you got to live with knowing that you could have done something. And as a Christian, you're obligated to do something. Murder's not new, and we talk about this on the show quite a bit, and this is why gun laws don't work. It's why laws against murder don't prevent murder. Sin is inherent in our human nature. We are born with it. Murder has been with us, with humanity, since the dawn of time. We don't need new laws to stop the descendants of Cain. What we need is an engaged and active public to get their heads out of their asses and look out for their neighbors. All right, that's my two cents. That's all for me for this week. I will talk to you again next week when we have another Clinging to God and Gun show with Pastor Bennett. Uh, Enjoy the rest of the show. We've got Mia and Sergeant Bill coming up. I will talk to you later. You can help support Armed Lutheran Radio just by listening to the show. Go to armedlutheran.us slash radio and download the Radio Public app and start listening. I want to take a minute here to thank our partner, the Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network. If you're involved in a situation where you have to use your firearm in self-defense, you very well may find yourself in a legal battle against overzealous prosecutors or the families of the criminal who you shot or threatened, who are looking to deprive you of your freedom or your hard-earned savings. You may find yourself charged with a crime or facing a civil lawsuit even if you did nothing wrong. That's where Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network comes in. For a small yearly fee, they will provide you with money for attorneys, money for bail, consultations, and access to experts like Marty Hayes and Masad Ayub. Don't face the fight alone. Visit Armed Citizens Network today. Use the promo code ARMEDLUTHERAN-25. Save $25 off your first year's membership, or you can grab the coupon on my website, armedlutheran.us. Sign up today. They will send you lots of cool resources, eight instructional DVDs, and a book by Masad Ayub that I cannot recommend highly enough. Don't wait until you need their help. Be prepared. Sign up today. Visit armedcitizensnetwork.org. This is Rob Morse of the Self-Defense Gun Stories podcast. I'm reminding you that this podcast is one of the many good ones on the Self-Defense Radio Network. Check out the other podcasts at selfdefenseradio.net. Time now for Mia's Motivations with Mia Anstein. Hey there, it has been a heck of a summer already and it's almost coming to a close. I wanted to give a little recap of something that I recently did with some friends and that is the DC Project. The DC Project is a nonpartisan 
organization that heads to the Capitol, to Washington, D.C., and it's a group of at least 50 women, and they try to have one from each state. We had two actually from Colorado, and a couple other states had two as well. But we all go to the Capitol to speak to legislators about Second Amendment issues. And it was actually my first year to go with the group. I've been to D.C. before, and I've been to speak to my legislators on multiple occasions. But the D.C. Project is an amazing organization. If you follow them on social media, you'll see a lot of what they're doing. The ladies, not just on a national level, but here soon there's going to be a lot going on on a local level, which is very important. I've had a lot of friends reaching out and asking how they can get involved. And that is one thing you can do is, of course, follow Armed Lutheran Radio, but also go follow the DC Project. And you can find that on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook, and just follow the group. Eventually, through in the next few months, you're going to see state organizations being formed and hopefully we can get groups going in all 50 states. Something that I noticed over the years is that I always thought there's a lot of people at the Capitol representing me and when I went to the Capitol here in Colorado I was just taken aback when I went to the Capitol for a sportsman's day and there was basically nobody there. The first time I went there were 12 people. And that was more to represent hunting. But I've also been on other days where the anti-gun people, they show up in the hundreds. They show up in masses. And the pro-gun people, the pro-Second Amendment people, there will just be a dozen or so. And it really does make a difference. If you can put your face in front of your representatives, they will remember you. And a really important thing to remember is to always be respectful. If you're going to talk with these people, if you're going to call and leave a voicemail, always be respectful, always be polite, use your manners. And if you've ever been talked to by somebody who is upset or irate or ranting and raving and yelling, think about how you react to that because most people will shut down, they close off, they don't even listen. So if you're going to leave messages or meet someone in person, always be respectful, try to have good conversations. We actually, for Colorado, we had conversations with some of our anti-gun um, senators and this, the conversations went very well. And part of that was because we went as a group. There were five in our group at the time that we went to this senator's office. We had seven because we picked up a couple whose groups were headed other directions And so we had seven ladies, and it really makes a difference when you can sit down in a room and politely have a conversation. We may not always agree on all issues, but sometimes we can respectfully agree to disagree. And part of what we were doing in that particular conversation was this senator wants red flag laws, which we already have in Colorado but they want to do this nationwide. And so part of the conversation was how to make the law better. Um, Not that it's a good law because it's not. And we did talk about some of the points why it's not. But we also mentioned some things that must be done in order to make the red flag law flow, so to speak. And I'll have to talk to you guys on another episode about the red flag laws and the, the downfalls and how they are have already been in multiple states and they're not working. But I'll do that on another episode. Sorry to ramble and babble, but I really do hope that you can find ways, maybe make it a goal in the next 12 months to find ways to get in touch with your representatives, whether it's your senator, your congressman, local representatives, and be a positive voice. If you don't know how to be a positive voice, reach out, leave a message. I will get back to you. Um, You can always learn new things. I 
learn from my friends all the time, which is another reason if you're going in person, it's nice to have someone else there because they can pick up where maybe you leave off if you don't know answers to questions or if there's a question you're forgetting to ask. So keep that in mind. I hope that you will have a great rest of the month. Don't forget, take somebody to the range and use that hashtag, let's go shooting. And I'll talk to you more next time. Bye guys. You can read more from Mia, watch her YouTube videos, or check out her podcast, Mac Outdoors with Mia and Leah, at miaanstein.com. The Self-Defense Gun Stories podcast is for people who are thinking of getting a gun, and for those who already own one. Each week, we invite a firearms instructor to discuss the news. At Self-Defense Gun Stories, we study responsible gun owners who protected themselves and the people they love. Were these gun owners lucky, or were they properly trained and prepared? What would you do if you were in their shoes? What should you do? Come listen at selfdefensegunstories.com. Time now for another Ballistic Minute with Sergeant Bill Sylvia. Hey everybody, I'm Sergeant Bill, and this is your Ballistic Minute. Today I want to talk about prepping for the 2019 IDPA World Championship. Okay, so this is a World Championship level match. I haven't even shot a Worlds. So what you have to expect is that this, because this is the highest level match that IDPA offers, that it's going to be most likely the most difficult and interesting match that IDPA can come up with. I talked to some of my friends that had shot the world's match the last time they did it a few years back. Uh, I wasn't able to go, and they were surprised by the level of difficulty on a lot of the stages and specifically some target arrays that were, you know, pretty heavy on hardcover. There were a lot of no shoots. There wasn't just wide open targets on every stage. So this is the type of things we need to think about when we're prepping to go shoot worlds or really any higher level, more difficult match. So first thing you want to get your gear squared away, make sure your gun is reliable. Make sure if you haven't changed the springs in a while, whether it be the recoil spring or whatever, you you know, your gun's working, it's reliable. You can shoot it and it doesn't have any problems. Make sure your mags work. When was the last time you changed the springs in your magazines? Make sure that they're locking back every time because IDPA is a slide lock world. Make sure if you're reloading that your ammo is good. Or if you're not reloading, you're buying factory ammo, that your ammo is good to go. It will chronograph. It doesn't have any issues, you know, as far as feeding and it doesn't give any problems when you're shooting. So all this stuff is squared away months before you go to the match. As I'm recording this, we've got just a hair under three months left. Everyone's doing sign up and squatting right now. So now is the time to start getting ready. Now we're gonna set up a dry fire routine. If you've been doing one already, great. If you haven't and you're going to shoot worlds and you wanna be consistent and compete at your best level, your highest level, it's time to get a routine down. Now by getting a routine in dry fire, I mean you are gonna do it on certain days of the week You're going to do it for a certain amount of time. And just like I was saying before, because this is the highest level match that IDPA has, start making your dry fire a little bit more difficult. If you have targets on the wall, take another target or a piece of white paper or black paper or something and put it across the target or put a target across another target and draw hands on it. Put some no shoots, put some hardcover, start ramping up the difficulty of your dry fire so that when you get to the match and you see that kind of stuff, you're not surprised. It's no big deal. We need to do the same thing with our live fire. If you're able to do live fire outside of matches, set up a routine. Is it once a week? Is it once every other week? What are you going to do when you do live fire? And again, if you bring out your targets, I like to practice with wide open targets just so I can see, you know, where I'm missing and stuff. But now's the time to start taking some paint and painting up hard targets 
and putting cover on them and stapling non-threats on there so that you can really ramp up the difficulty so that you're used to it, so that you're prepared. Okay, so we've made it more difficult. We've put more hard cover on our live and dry fire targets. Let's increase the distance. Let's back up a little bit. Shoot at distances that you're not real comfortable with because you could get ranges at the max of what IDPA allows. So be prepared for those maximum distances. Now, if your range isn't long enough for, say, uh, what is it, 50 yards or something, it's a pretty long uh, distance you can do for the standards. If you're not able to do that, make a half-size target or buy a half-size target. And if you've got a 25-yard range, if not, get even smaller and just make it more difficult. Now, your practice sessions are going to be more difficult, obviously, and you're not going to be just breezing through them because the difficulty's ramped up on them. And that's okay. You just have to tell yourself that, you know, this is practice. I'm trying to get used to this. The more you do it, the more you do it with the higher difficulty, the better you'll get at it, the less non-threats you'll hit, the less hard cover shots you'll get. You'll start being able to read your sights and shots better, call your shots better. You'll be ready. You'll be prepared. And you'll have confidence, that confidence in going, you walk up to a stage and you look at the targets and you go, I can make every one of these. You don't even question whether, oh, I don't know if I can make that shot or what am I going to do here? You've already practiced it. You've already had the difficulty up and you're ready to go. So get out there, get some dry fire practice routine going, get your live fire going, ramp up that difficulty so you won't be surprised by any shot that they may have at the 2019 IDPA World Championship. Get that confidence from preparation. I'm Sergeant Bill. We'll see you at Worlds. And this has been your Ballistic Minute. Sergeant Bill Sylvia is a veteran of the Dallas Police Force and a masterclass competitive shooter. You can check out his YouTube videos at armedlutheran.us slash Sergeant Bill. For show notes, be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. Check out the Facebook page, The Armed Lutheran, or join our Facebook group, Fans of Armed Lutheran Radio. If you like what you hear, please leave us a comment on our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback, or a review on iTunes, and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening to Armed Lutheran Radio.